Hello guys and welcome back and today I want to show you how to set up your Synology router, your RT2600AC along with two mesh points, that's two of the MR2200AC. Synology's router series and particularly their Synology router management software is genuinely unparalleled and I'm going to be comparing this against a number of different routers in the coming weeks and mesh points dare I say it but I'm going to set these devices up for the first time straight from 0 to 100 to show you guys just how easy it is to not only set up the router but also set up multiple mesh points for your home or business. Now uh, what I've done right now something you guys need to do when you first start this off is unbox your mesh routers and your Synology router and have them all ready in the room that you are in. You can set up the mesh routers remotely, of course, you can stick them in the rooms or areas or basement or wherever you want these mesh points to live later, but I strongly recommend that they're in the initial setup of these devices, you have them all within arm's reach, it will just make things easier. Then you can power down the mesh points, install them in the places you're going to use them later, then boot them up again and they should all find each other straight away. But once you've got them all turned on and connected, leave them running for about two to three minutes. All of them will first boot up with an amber light showing that they're just booting up. When they're ready, the mesh router will have a sea of green lights there denoting 5G and 2.4 gigahertz access as well as the system being accessible. The mesh points will have a blue dot showing on the front of the device which will change once we've got them set up. But once you've done that, make your way over to a PC like I'm doing now. From here, go to your network connections at the bottom and look for Wi-Fi connected points. As you can see here, both the two Wi-Fi mesh routers have appeared and our main router have all appeared on my local area network wirelessly. What we're gonna do is make our way into the Synology router. From here, we're gonna click connect and we've got two ways to do this. On the base of the device, we can enter an eight digit code that is found on the base of each Wi-Fi router from Synology or we can go straight into entering the security key that by default is just the word Synology in lowercase. Don't worry, we can change that later. As soon as we've done that, the device will appear with some pop-ups here on our screen and what we want to do is either head over to find.synology.com or the automatic pop-up that will happen when we connect to the device here which will allow us to set up our initial primary router, the RT2600AC for the first time. So let's get started. From here we have to create an account and I'm going to go for a very basic account here but of course we can change that later. Let's go through there and it will just tell us how terrible my password is there. Don't worry once again you can change it. Click next and make your way onto the next screen. From here we need to set up what the SSID, the wireless access point is going to be. And once again I am going to make this Really, really easy. For those that are in my building, the password is password, knock yourself out. And from here, we can also say where in the world we're going to be. This is more for marketing purposes. And to be honest, I'm going to put that there, but it's not going to make a, much of a difference to me. I'm going to click next and make our way moving forward. So from here is where we want to decide what we want the router to be. Do we want the device to be an extension of our existing network or a standalone router in its own way? For the sake of a mesh network, we want this, the RT2600, that's what we're accessing this with, to be our wireless router. And we can decide whether we want external access to that great software. For now, I'm going to say disabled, but maybe you want to have access to your router and all of that great analytical data outside of your network. We're going to click next. Finally, we can talk about the internet connectivity, whether we want it to be automatic, manual, or dynamic. For the sake of ease, and particularly you home users, I would recommend auto IP, but do look into, if you're a business, some of these other options to particularly manual IP settings. Then we click apply, and from here, we're now going to set up our Synology router. From here, we'll leave the device for a couple of minutes while it gets the software ready, and the device will be accessible for us from this PC. So I'm gonna fast forward, to when that Synology software SRM has been installed. Right, so the initial setup has been completed and now we have to switch to a new Wi-Fi connection. The reason is because that initial connection we were using there was kind of the back end, the admin. And what we wanna do now is connect to our newly built Wi-Fi connection. 
So if we go down there, there's our Synology Smart Connect option, just like it says on screen. We're going to click there. We're going to connect automatically. And now we're going to enter that security key we used earlier. And we're connected. So from here, we can start making our way into the router manager. So we can click this link on the screen if we like, or we could have gone into it any other way. Now, for those who aren't aware, Synology already have a network monitoring app known as Synology Assistant, which of course we couldn't use at the initial stage of this video because uh, the device wasn't on the same network as our PC. But now, of course, we can use this going forward to search our local area network and it will find the router. So here we are on the desktop here of Synology Router Management and there are loads of cool options here. I've got a whole video over uh, going over this when it was first released and I know there has been another update to this software recently. So what I would recommend is do check out my other video where I go through all the bits and bobs that this software can do. But the next thing you need to do before you start connecting to mesh routers is make sure you have got the latest version of the software on your system. It's not that it will impinge it, but I would certainly recommend that you check that you've got the latest version of the Synology software on your router. As you can see, there is a newer version available for me because this is a slightly older device here that I'm using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that and install it. And don't worry, you're not going to have to wait. I'm just going to skip forward now. Now our update has been installed, we can move forward and log back into our device. Once again, if you already had the latest DS, um, SRM software, good for you. But from here, I'm now going to show you how to add those Wi-Fi access points to our Synology NAS system. So we're going to skip forward because, again, we will do a full overview here. But for now, what we want to do is add those mesh points that we I constructed off screen earlier. We need to go to Wi-Fi Connect, and from here, start going to Wi-Fi Point. At the moment here, you can see that it's saying what the you know, channel or the primary device is on, and you can create separate networks. And again, I will do a full overview of these. Next, we go to Wi-Fi Point, and from here, we can see that I haven't added any mesh points yet. What we need to do next is click Add, and now it will tell us exactly how to deploy these. Now, once again, if you're not already aware, mesh routers are designed at their peak to cover as much ground as possible. You have to make sure they're close enough that they can communicate, but not too close that they become largely redundant. Now, that was kind of the main reason I wanted to do all the setup as close as possible in one room at the initial setup before you disconnect these devices and scatter them across your home or office because it's just easier to set this up now rather than find out you've set the device too far away for it to be found. So, from here, we click Next. And it, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you had the device turned on for a while so that the blue light was showing, which is what these two mesh routers are doing right here in front of me. We'll go from here, and it, we're just telling it that our Wi-Fi access points are ready. And then the device will start searching the new local area network created by our Synology RT2600. And as you can see, it has found both of those mesh routers. And as you can also see, they've been on for exactly the same length of time. So what we want to do is add them both. And before we proceed, it's worth mentioning that what you can do is name them. And by naming them, it means if you ever look at the analytics of this device, you will be able to see where in the home or office it's based. So say for, for now, say we say that one of them is going to be in the basement. And we're going to say this other unit is going to be located on the living room. Let's say that, because I will be doing a whole video speed testing and showing these mesh networks in this office building that I find myself in. So you can set these for your local area network as needed, then click Next, and it will start the process of synchronizing all of our mesh Wi-Fi points together. This can take a few minutes, so I'm going to fast forward to when this is complete. Right, so the Wi-Fi mesh points have now been set up, but both of them required the very latest firmware as well. So the device is now going to restart the router along with the other two component parts, and we're going to see what happens when it's all booted up together. We're going to have our great Synology Wi-Fi network. So let's let it restart. Right, so our Wi-Fi network has now been set up with our two mesh points. So what we want to do now is go through a few of the testing phases. Well, 
The living room one there, as we can see, if, again, these are all still in my local area network, and I just want to show you guys about the difference between connecting to different Wi-Fi mesh points before I end this video. Luckily, Synology have included a performance test functionality here where we can pick one of these two guys and we can do a quick test of them. So if we do run a test on these individual Wi-Fi points, what you'll notice while it does it is that these two should be near enough identical in terms of connectivity to and from our Wi-Fi router. And that's because at the moment, I've put these all in my local area network. Once I've done a test on both of these and we can see the testing speed on screen, I'm gonna power down one of these mesh points and move it to a much further distance. Then I'm gonna run the same test to show you guys how this mesh system will work. In a follow-up video, of course, I will be showing you exactly the speed you can get from different Wi-Fi points and showing a Synology Wi-Fi mesh network in action. But for now, let's carry on and let this complete its testing of the primary access point um, upload and download to the mesh point on both of these. So as you can see, even a cursory glance will show you that although both of these two upload and download speeds from the mesh points to the original Synology router are very, very similar indeed, you can see that one of them is a few feet closer than the other, clearly, because the basement router, as I've named it, is higher in speed than the one I've classed living room router. Now, although all of these routers are still in the, uh, the mesh routers are in the same room as me, what I'm gonna do now without cutting camera is I'm going to power down one of these routers and I'm gonna move it some 10, 10 meters away. Now, this should alter these read settings and I'm not even gonna tell you which one I'm gonna disconnect. We're gonna let the results speak for themselves. Now, it is worth mentioning when powering down a mesh point, you should do it safely. I'm not gonna do it safely on this occasion, so please don't do the way I do it. I'm simply only doing this to make it a lot quicker for you guys watching this video. So I'm gonna start disconnecting one of these routers now. Cool, one router has been disconnected. I'm now gonna let the device power up in around 10 meters away. Cool. I've entered back into my office. I'm sorry about the boredom there. Now, it should take a few minutes, they say two to three minutes, for a mesh Wi-Fi point to be identified. You can immediately see that the one that I've classed as living room has now been lost, and that's because I've powered the device down. If we go back to the main unit interface here, you can see that the living room Wi-Fi point is no longer showing. Now, between me and about 10 meters away, where I've uh, now plugged in and powered on, the uh, Wi-Fi mesh point is about two thin walls. So that may even affect the results as well, but I just wanted to show you guys just how straightforward and easy it is to set this device up um, in your local office or home and then distribute them around your local area network and then power them up again. They should find each other straight away. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit because rather than have you guys waiting around for two to three minutes, it'll probably be a lot more interesting to skip forward when the device is found. And boom, there it is. It's found the living room Wi-Fi point, that mesh MR2200AC, and it is now re-adding it automatically to our mesh network. As you can see, it's just in the process of doing it, and that's how easy it is to set up a Synology Wi-Fi mesh network as well as just move them around without worrying too much about if the power fails. So I'm gonna leave that to connect that up and then we're going to do another Wi-Fi performance test of our mesh router to show exactly what the difference is. So there's the living room there. We're gonna go back into those Wi-Fi settings and this time we're gonna run the same test. There's our previous speed test there, but let's see what the performance is. And there you go, it's been found, the Wi-Fi network is still intact and we can move around these Wi-Fi points later as we see fit. I'm gonna wrap things up here. I'm gonna be doing a full overview of this software along with some other Wi-Fi bits and bobs along with speed tests 
and walking test along with power result, speed test and upload test in future videos as well as comparing against the brand new Linksy series of Wi-Fi mesh routers and of course Google Wi-Fi in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about the perfect mesh Wi-Fi network for you, do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to wrap things up. Cheerio. Click like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.